Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world today. My name's Paul Webb, I'm the founder of B2B Energy, and you are listening to Energy Speaks Back. Energy Speaks Back interviews energy experts from around the world. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, and welcome to episode 28 of Energy Speaks Back. Weekly, I present to you experts from around the world, and today we are in Italy and Turin, interviewing a fellow energy expert. Our purpose, as always, is to provide a good understanding of energy management knowledge from around the world, which is available today for us to deliver savings that impact on our planet. My guest today is an independent energy efficiency expert who I have been working together on the 11 week energy challenge. He has extensive knowledge in the industrial and commercial sector in Italy regarding energy management. So without any further ado, I give you Andrea Meritano. Andrea, good morning and how are you today? Good morning, Paul. It's all okay. It's all okay today. Thank you. Good. And you? Uh, yes, I'm very well. I've woken up to a beautiful sunny day. Um, I'm just hoping it's going to stay that way. So what's uh, Italy like this morning? Nice weather? No, not so nice uh, this morning. Uh, the, we are. Uh, I'm. I live near Turin, thirty kilometers from Turin, and uh, this morning I have snow uh, near my home, one hundred right. meter higher than my home. Really? Is all 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 uh, white, all Excellent. white by so, snow. Yes. So and you, now it's uh, covered. Uh, it's cold. It's uh, cold. Uh, not so nice. Right. It seems to be in February, not in March. So in my world, I'd love to go and get my skis on and maybe I'd go for a ski today would be perfect way to start my morning. But um, I live in Essex. Essex doesn't have any mountain ranges. It's very flat. I don't <laughs> ski <laughs> locally. <Yeah. laughs> I, have to, I have to come to beautiful places like Italy to go skiing. Yes, yes, you can come here. I have uh, some uh, skiing station near my home, uh, one hour by car. Wow. We can go. Where we had the uh, Olympic Winter Games in 2006. Excellent. Excellent. We, we have all the plans uh, ready. Not this year because of COVID, but uh, next year you, you can come here to ski if you want. So you can Andrea, go together. I'm, I'm just writing it in my diary to make sure that I have a reminder to, uh, right. to touch base with you <laughs> for next okay. year. So great. Um, Andrea, it's really lovely to see you. Um, we've met, um, you know, you was one of the first people to reach out that brought my book. So, you know, thank you for that, for you being that person to buy my book. So I appreciate that. And secondly, you've joined my 11 week energy challenge uh, back on the 11th of January. You're one of the 11 people. Um, so I've got to know you over the last 10 weeks now. We've got one more week to run on that. Um, and our relationship's really built. And it's been great because we've been sharing pictures regarding energy management. Um, and it's like looking at my own pictures. And you you commented the other day, yeah. it's like looking at your picture. You know, we're both seeing exactly the same things. It's, it's been really refreshing for me. So, Andrea... I've learned so much about you over the last uh, 10 weeks. Can you, is it, can you uh, share with us your background uh, for the audience today, please? Yes, sure. Uh, I mean, in this industry, it's uh, 14 years. Uh, before I was a CEO of a small company that was uh, doing uh, perforated metals. So that completely different uh, argument but uh, I, I'm an electronic engineer and always uh, I always loved uh, to think to sustainability to renewables energy and when I when I changed my life because I I, I, so, I sold my company and I decided to, to change completely my work I went in in the energy industry at the beginning, uh, I realized many photovoltaic plants, and then I switched uh, to energy efficiency. I certified uh, in 
2015, I, I certified as a, an energy expert in Italy. Two years uh, later, as a measure and verification expert with uh, AE. And I, I continued uh, working in an in energy service company as technical director. Three years ago, I went out from uh, this company and uh, I started my freelance or uh, consultant uh, work life. Yeah, yeah. I am a consultant and a trainer. I, I train too many people uh, in, uh, in energy efficiency to sustain the energy expert exam in Italy and also on uh, 50,001 50, scheme and uh, other topics uh, on, the, on our industry. I switched from renewables to efficiency because uh, I, I think we have to do all to, to work, to use them together, but efficiency has to come first because it's, it's cheaper. Uh, if we reduce consumption, we need less renewables. And so <laughs> if you put them one, uh, if you put them together, you understand that you, you may reach a bigger goal. And uh, all what I do on efficiency uh, is uh, to, to reach uh, a, a greater sustainability, to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, so th the efficiency is the first step. It's amazing how um, you and I, we're from different countries. We both speak different languages. You, you, you do an amazing job speaking English. Um, and I'd speak very, as we said earlier in the uh, the conversation, I, I know three words in Italian, and that, that won't <laughs> help. That will not help us today on our, our podcast. So, um, I'm very intrigued that you followed a very similar career path to me. And when I look at you and hear you talking, I see myself regarding you know you're you're an energy expert, you, you, a measurement and verification, your ISO fifty thousand one. You believe in uh, reducing energy rather than generating energy through renewables, which is exactly, you know, both you and I are on, very on the same paths. Um, and that's very refreshing. I think that's why our relationship has grown over the last uh, sort of 10 weeks or so. I'm intrigued to understand what sector you focus on regarding businesses. I focus more on uh, industrial sector. Uh, because of my background, uh, because of my preferences, and because also of uh, what I can find on the market. I have some occasion to work with uh, big uh, training and consultancy uh, firms, and with, with them I travel all around the world uh, to consult uh, companies on energy conservation, uh, starting from uh, from the bottom yeah. uh, because my my approach is not uh, to enter and to find uh, some big issues my uh, approach is to apply my own methodology yeah apply the methodology starting small and growing slowly yes uh, if you can if you find uh, some big space uh, uh, obviously you attack him yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, the approach is uh, to understand how the company is using energy yeah. and to follow the flow of energy and finding uh, wastage, uh, finding uh, some uh, space uh, where you can uh, do something with uh, sm small uh, with uh, a, a small approach with uh, a, mm, not so much money. Yeah, so when, then so you when, can, sorry. So basically we break it down. Um, so what we've been doing in the, the 11 week challenge, we, we break yeah. it down into three areas. So we look at the, the no cost, 
the medium cost and the capital cost. Of course, um, yes. And as I always say, energy management is a journey and we follow that journey. We don't go, you know, we don't go and eat the whole of the cake, we start eating the cake gently and work <laughs> on the, and then, you know, if a big lump of cake flies at us and it's, it's an obvious thing to do, then we eat the cake. But um, yes, I like that approach. And it's an approach that I've been sort of putting together regarding uh, the 11 week uh, challenge. Do organizations come to you or do you have to go and find them? In great part, organization comes to me. Right. I, I, I'm not able to, to do a great uh, commercial work. It's not in, in my, in my, in my courts. Uh, and so I yeah. want, I, I live of uh, relations. Uh, I use uh, some social, I use some uh, different uh, medium to, to, to make it. people know me and to attract uh, customers, yeah. clients, yes. Yeah. Uh, and and have... in big part, they, um, they come from mouth of word, yeah. word of mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And in, in, we, in the UK, we'd call that referrals. So would, um, yeah. how many people in your team? Is it just you as an independent? It's just me as an independent, and uh, I collaborate with some uh, other professionals like me. And yeah. sometimes we work together. Uh, it depends on on the topics. Yeah. Uh, but uh, generally, I I approach by uh, the client by myself because I I am what I call a generalist in my specialty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I prefer to to see the whole figure and to understand what happens and then to call some specialist to do the work in what I found. But I want to follow uh, all the flow. I yeah. want to understand the big picture. Yeah. And, um, in you know, I, I promote on a regular basis about energy being the third largest expense. Is that... And, you know, we've been talking to other experts around the country and they sometimes say that it's maybe more or slightly less. In your opinion, where is that? In uh, it, working uh, in industries, it depends too much on what the industry is doing. Uh, in building uh, management is the third, as you say, and you, you know better than me. Uh, but in some industries, it, it may become uh, even the first. Right. Thanks to some uh, big plans, uh, uh, like um, uh, in the in the iron industry, uh, I, I don't have the word that foundries. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. For example, yeah. Yeah. Uh, paper uh, factories. Yeah. And so on. Uh, also, we we have in Italy a, a big uh, area in the in the Emilia Romagna near Modena where they do ceramics, and also in ceramics, energy is a big expenditure. I don't know. I I don't think it's the first, but maybe the second. Yeah. Uh, in other industries uh, like uh, home appliances, uh, even automotive, uh, it's uh, it's lower. It's not the third, maybe the the fourth or the fifth. Because the the the, um, the incidence of energy is very lower on all other costs. Yeah. And Andrea, do you look at um, the procurement and the of the energy? Do you focus on that? Do you focus on buying the energy for the organisation? Ah, okay. The, the I, styles. When it happens uh, on some companies that ask me to to buy the energy i also buy energy but uh, it's not my it's not by my field uh, even if i started in uh, in a, in repower that is a company that is selling and it's producing and selling energy is a producer and a trader i yeah. started my my work in in the in this industry in that way but uh Suddenly, I shifted to a more technical uh, yeah. 
type of work. And, um, and what is the market? So in the UK, it's, it's an open market. So we have probably in the region of 19 energy suppliers, known energy suppliers. Is the market in Italy open? So can if I owned a business in Italy, I can go and pick who I wanted to buy my energy from? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the market is open. Is uh, from the first year of the first year of uh, two thousand that the market has opened. Right. Uh, completely open for uh, from two thousand seven, but uh, for um, homes, we have a or we have a big part of uh, homes that are that remains on the historical supplier right uh, they they are no more obliged to change it will happen in 2023 right uh, but uh, for uh, industries and uh, big users uh, the, the market is completely open we have um, too many operators uh, the the big the bigger uh, are uh, the most known uh, uh, Italian and European operators, yeah. And you can buy your energy as you want. Uh, it's difficult to have a big saving on 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 the purchasing because uh, only forty forty five percent of the price is. Uh, uh, open to market because yeah, the rest uh, is uh, linked uh, to uh, burdens uh, burdens uh, linked uh, to the maintenance of the grid uh, and yeah. uh, other things uh, taxes uh, and so on yeah it's very similar to the uk yeah very similar structure and do um so the, is Italy standalone regarding their uh, their energy sort of resources, or do they have links to other countries? No, is uh, Italy is not uh, standalone. With uh, we don't have uh, some resources uh, like uh, oil uh, and gas. We have yeah. some uh, some oil and gas, but very small, and they weren't uh, explored. Uh, in the past, we, we yeah. started with uh, INI by Enrico Mattei in the 60s, but then, uh, then it was, uh, it, it, it stopped, it, it, it didn't go on with some exploration. We have some little areas uh, in the south, uh, and but uh, not so good, not so big. And about uh, instead of the electrical energy we produce more than 80 percent in italy but uh, uh, a big part with oil that we buy yes uh, outside of italy so uh, so the, if you if you look at the single energy vectors on electricity we have a, a big uh, Italian comp component, but if you look at the energy, at the whole energy level, we are all dependent from the from abroad. Yeah. Uh, with renewables, uh, it is changing. Yeah. With the use of renewables, because uh, especially in the south of Italy, uh, we have some uh, big eolic plant and also photovoltaic. And we we are now near twenty percent of our electricity is produced with renewables. Right. Maybe yeah. maybe a little more. I'm not so sure, but yeah, yeah. around twenty percent. And it's growing, yeah. And it's growing, yes. Yeah. It's good. growing, and it will be growing faster with the last uh, government. And now, with the with the last government that set it up. Uh, 15 years, uh, 15 <laughs> days uh, or 20 days ago with Mario Draghi at, as a president. Uh, uh, we have a new ministry for uh, ecological transition. And it is, it is working uh, on expanding the use of renewable, renewables and to help 
not only Italy but all the European countries to to reach the, the European goals of uh, 2013, 2015. Yeah. Um, Andrea, we both follow similar patterns regarding what we do. What are, what's your challenges that you find in your country regarding energy management and efficiencies? Well, I think uh, the challenges I find I've not so linked with my country but with people and i think that the the issues may be similar in other countries because <laughs> at least in european countries um, yeah. in, in in asia may be different yeah yeah in asia but uh, in european countries I, I think it is similar uh i always start and i'm sure you do the same because you you talked uh, last week about the art in energy and the yeah. first uh, the first uh, word in art is awareness excuse me i have my cat here i present my cat here oh beautiful leia like the star wars princess and uh, now so, so i get to use some of my italian ciao bella ciao bella <laughs> <laughs> She wanted to appear in your podcast. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I was saying that uh, the problems I find uh, are more linked with people than with the the, the countries. Uh, I start with awareness, and too many people don't want or don't have the right awareness. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the difficult part in the, the first approach. When you go over this, then you are, you are able to do a good work in the company. Sometimes it doesn't happen. You try to do the work in any case, but it's uh, even more difficult. Uh, because I, in my... In my approach, uh, I start from awareness to to reach savings, uh, passing through through measurement, uh, through knowledge and analysis of the data coming from measurement, to from the management of the energy uh, with the knowledge uh, we have uh, we have we have from data, and then we may arrive to savings. But if we don't have awareness at the beginning, it's all difficult. It's yeah. difficult to to convince to spend some money to put some meters. If you don't have meters, you don't have data, and so on. And yeah. all all the castle is going down. Yeah, and it becomes a very large uh, jigsaw puzzle that we are trying to put into place um, to 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 find the picture of the energy management. Um, and I, I love my analogy regarding the the art of energy. So yes, awareness. We then look at the reward, you know. And it's once we've addressed the awareness, there's a massive reward on ourselves because we've achieved the awareness, and for the organisation and for ourselves. And then we take it into the training. And the training for me is the the most important part because we need to continue that training. I haven't stopped training in my career. I'm always no. learning. Even this morning, I, I ran a, a, a YouTube video just to sort of familiarize myself with some other training regarding management. You know, we're constantly, and, and it's very easy now to pick up the training. You know, you can go online, you can ask people. People are very educated and have the knowledge to share. And, you know, people are becoming more of sharing of that knowledge. Tell me about ISO 50001. Yeah. You, you're obviously a accredited ISO 50001 consultant. Um, and you were telling me yes. recently you've been doing some work on this in your country. Yes, I'm doing, uh, at this moment, I'm working on an ISO 50001 in a company that 
is not using too much energy because uh, they are doing uh, maintenance on HVC plants with some robots, with some other technologies. They also uh, have a laboratory to find uh, Legionella and so on. Uh, and so their consumption is more linked with the only with the um, the offices, but the big part of their uh, energy consumption is linked with the with their fleet, the the, the vans then go that go in on to the clients to do the work. Yeah. And so it it is not so big as uh, it is a big company, but not so big from energy point of view. Yeah. Uh, and I'm working on the on the, all the the fleet of the van and trying to apply new find new new ways to to save energy also there not only changing vans that it, it's too easy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but uh, applying uh, some things on, on the existing fleet yeah. For me, um, I, I, I'm like yourself. I haven't got the expertise in, in transport, but um, I've, I've learned different best practices like checking the tire pressures and the correct tires, yeah. um, the um, defle air deflection and um, aerodynamics yes. of, of vehicles, um, training people, making, again, we're back to that word again, awareness, making them aware, aware of how to drive, teaching them how to drive. You know, yes. there is a, a right way of driving commercial vehicles. And right. I, I find it's the, the simple things like video, you know, having attaching videos to the, the vehicles front and back so you can measure how people are driving. And, and as long as they're aware of that's happening, then they, their driving style changes. And all these sort of small steps help. You know, yeah, all together. You need to helps. look at the big picture. The big picture is, yeah, go, go and buy electric vehicles. That's the big picture. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, looking at the little picture and starting the putting that jigsaw puzzle together again slowly. Yeah, yeah. In effect, we are applying uh, all what you said now: uh, maintenance, uh, pressure tire, also uh, use of eco eco tires that yes. has a, a lower uh, rolling. Uh, I don't know in English how it is called. Uh, they use more energy, less energy rolling on the street. Right. Uh, the, the volume. Less, uh, less friction, I suppose. Yeah, friction, right. Yeah. My less Italian, friction. Andrea, I'm, I really admire you today. You're not speaking in your, your first language. Um, your, your English is very good. Um, it's <laughs> probably my English isn't very good that you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> my question no no <laughs> but it's been great talking to you so i like to um put people in on the spot as always uh, that's the idea of the podcast we can get some really um unconditional information back out of energy experts so andre give me uh can you give the the listeners today a, a takeaway from your expertise and what you can give back to the industry today. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, I can, yeah. I can say uh, it, it is, a, maybe it is a summary of what he said until now, but uh, it's what, it is what I call uh, BLS, the energy BLS. You know, BLS is the basic life support, uh, a technique uh, to reanimate people. No, yeah. but I I change uh, BLS in in energy because is what I apply, and is uh, build your methodology. The L is learn, learn constantly. Uh, and stay curious, stay up to date with technologies, uh, understand what is happening near you, because too many things you learn, you may, may apply. And the S is share, is what you are doing, what we are doing now together, 
what you want to do with your uh, 11 challenge week. Uh, but is what if you remember the the first time we we meet uh, for your LinkedIn coffee? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I said you sharing and uh, um, sharing experience be, experiences between experts is the fast growing thing I know, and not only between experts, but also sharing with your, your clients. Yeah. Because the the goal when I enter uh, in a factory is to train them to go on alone without me. Yeah. My goal is not to stay to the client till I want. Is is to train them to be completely independent on energy topics. Yeah. So I show how to do, I build a system with them and I hope to go away and they are able to, to go on alone. Uh, maybe they need some, uh, some things in a different moment. They can call me and I'm, I want to help them, sure. But my goal is not to, to stay to the client and do the work uh, instead of him. Yeah. Okay. Andrea, so be a less. Build method your methodology. Uh, learn constantly and share experiences. This Andrea, is my takeaway for. That is absolutely. Our your audience. That's a, absolutely amazing. Uh, um, you know, I'm so pleased that we met. And you, yeah, you came on to my first coffee coffee morning that I sometimes set up and uh, we shared information and, and knowledge. And you know, what you've just said there is, is perfect. It's exactly what we need to be doing. And I, I've worked with many of organizations. I'm not working with them now, but I've left a legacy behind that which I hope is continuing going forward. So that's, that's an amazing, unselfish thing to say. So. Andrea, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm, as I said, I'm really pleased that we've met and, uh, and I'm sure we'll be skiing next year together. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I've got it in my diary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you, eh? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Andrea, please, you and your family, your good wife, please uh, be thank safe. You. Be safe, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening today and thank you to my special guest. And if you want to know more about managing your third largest expense, please go to our website on b2benergy.co.uk. That leaves me with one more thing to say. Be safe.